What's going on everybody? My name is Denzel Williams and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about a few tips and tricks that I've picked up over the past few weeks when using my iPad mini. Now the main goal of this is to help you get more comfortable with your iPad and at the same time increase your productivity levels to better help you in your day-to-day -day workflow. But before we get into that, I wanna give you a gentle reminder to go ahead and tap that subscribe button if you like what you see. I wanna to continue to keep growing this community and with your help, I can do so. But now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and get into it. So one of the first tips I found out was the use of Instant Note. So basically how this works is you take the Apple Pencil and tap the screen when the iPad is locked. From there, the Notes app pops up and you can go ahead and type or write or draw or do whatever you need to do within the Notes app. And from there, it automatically saves it to your notes and you can come back to it later or you can go directly back into the Notes app and continue working on that particular note. Now, I found this to be very beneficial for me just because sometimes I have some brief moment of greatness where I want to jot down something and all I have to do is just tap the iPad, go ahead and write it down and keep on moving. Or if I want to just draw something, I can do that as well too. So again, I think for those who, you know, you need to write down something relatively quickly, it works out perfectly for you. Now with Instanote, you do want to make sure that you have the second gen Apple Pencil as well and also the most up-to-date iPad OS. In addition to that, you do wanna check your settings to make sure that it is enabled, so it's relatively quick to get to, but also double check that to make sure in the event that you have uh, any issues with setting this up. Now, going into Quick Note, it's similar to Instant Note, but this takes place with the iPad being unlocked. All you have to do is swipe up from the bottom right of the screen in a diagonal motion, from there, it pops open a little notepad where you can go ahead and jot down any information that you may need or use this on a web page to, let's say, uh, take a particular URL and put it within the note. Or if you want to take notes on that particular web page, it's fine as well, too. So, again, those two uh, actual note taking options, I think, will definitely be beneficial to you in the long run. So another tip that I found was being able to use handwritten text and turning it into regular text. So from there, it's relatively simple. All you do is write out whatever you have written in the notes app. From there, you select it and then you use copy as text. From there, it'll print out exactly what you wrote out. And from that point, you can use that in another app or if you're using it to send to an email, whatever the situation may be, it basically takes your handwritten information and turns it into a standardized text so that you can use and copy and paste from there. So definitely one of those where I was like, this is kind of cool because now I can just write in my terrible handwriting, but, um, uh, but I can use that and then copy it to text from there, place it in various apps to where now it just makes it a little bit easier for me. So hopefully that works out for you too. Now with this particular tip is the use of the screenshot function. So you don't necessarily have to use the Apple Pencil, but I did use mine. You can use your finger as well too. But from there you take a swipe in the diagonal direction from the left hand side of the screen. And from there, it'll be able to pull a particular screenshot of whatever you have on the screen. But this is extremely useful when you're, let's say if you're on a web page and you're trying to use markup to be able to, you know, jot down notes or point out something to send to somebody else relatively easy to do so. And I think that, you know, it's pretty beneficial when it comes to trying to send this to somewhere else or save to a PDF file or what may have you. So again, another quick function that I think comes in handy as you're working in your day to day that you can use, but you know, uh, a lot of people don't really think about using. So, but again, you don't have to use your Apple Pencil. You can literally use your fingertips as well. All you have to do is swipe diagonally from the left-hand side of the screen and it'll take a screenshot from there. You can use it to mark up, or if you're, like I said, if you're on a web page, you can either use, look at the whole web page and mark it up or just that particular screenshot. So definitely a cool function that I think uh, you'll like once you start using it. So with this particular tip, it is using the copy and paste function and it kind of speeds up the way that you copy and paste. So what you want to do is go into the note app and select your text. From there, you'll make a pinching motion with three fingers, copy that information. And then from there, you'll go ahead and zoom out with that same three fingers and it'll be able to paste that information on there. So I believe if you, once you start to, it takes some getting used to, but once you start to get this 
uh, down packed and this particular motion down packed, I think it'll definitely help your day-to-day -day workflow depending on what you need. If you need to copy and paste something rather quickly, um, I think that it'll be a perfect little trick that you can use every day. Now with this particular tip, it definitely could be for the one who's already immersed themselves in the Apple ecosystem. And it's one of those where you'll probably forget because it's not something that pops up in your mind in the first thing when you start grabbing your iPad, iPhone, or MacBook. And it's the use of handoff. So with handoff, it's the ability to be able to copy and paste from one device and transfer it to the next. So it's relatively simple. So for this particular example, let me show you how I did it. So I had some notes that were in my iPhone that I wanted to transfer over to my iPad. So all you have to do is copy those notes and then select paste on the device that you're using. Now again, you can use this for Mac to iPad, iPhone to Mac, whichever one you wanted to do, as long as the devices are in close proximity to each other, this would work. So, and this can also be done for photos as well too. So again, if you're trying to transfer one photo to the next, you can do it that way also. But again, it's just depending on the use case for you, but I definitely think it's a cool feature that again, a lot of people would forget about, but it works relatively well if you have multiple Apple devices. So again, try that out and let me know how it works for you too. So going into this next tip, it's definitely something that I believe that's probably the most beneficial for me to be able to cut down the noise and clutter when it comes to my iPad. And it's using focus modes to set up home screens without throughout your iPad. So what I did was I set up three different home screens that were titled productivity, gaming, and also one that sends me back to the home page. And within these particular home pages, they cut out a lot of the noise and silence a lot of my notifications to let me know that, hey, it's time to focus, it's time to kind of dive in and get work done. Or for the gaming, for example, it allows me to be able to just focus in and just have some leisure time. And I've kind of made it like gaming entertainment. So it's a little bit of half and half, but for me, I think it better kind of compartmentalizes everything that I need to be done. So I definitely want to get into more of how can I make these particular widgets through shortcuts and kind of make it a little bit more tailored to me. So if it's something that I think you want to know more about, I can definitely try to make a video that kind of dives into how to make these as well as how can I tailor it um, and make it easier for you. So again, definitely, definitely think it's something that you should look into. And if you're interested in, I can go ahead and set up another video to kind of talk about shortcut and making those widgets and home screens for you. So just let me know in the comment section. Going into this next tip, I've kind of already hinted at this in my previous video with the unboxing of the iPad mini, but it is the keyboard resizing. Now with the iPad mini, the keyboard takes up the majority of the screen, which is very annoying. So I'm kind of glad that Apple would put this particular feature in to where you can resize the keyboard. And in this instance, you can pinch in and move the keyboard to make it smaller where it resembles an iPhone. So from there, you can go ahead and move it around all over the screen that you want, and you can use the swipe feature, which again makes it very beneficial for those who, are, who have an iPad mini and they have relatively small amount of screen real estate. So keep that in mind as well. So in order to get the keyboard back to normal size, all you have to do is zoom out. From there, it goes back to a normal keyboard size. And then there's another feature of the keyboard resizing where you can kind of have the keyboard split in two. Now I've used this a couple times and it's kind of weird, but I think those who use it a lot more would be a, more, a lot more comfortable with it. So again, check that out, see if you like it or not. But again, you have three ways to be able to use a keyboard and I think it's definitely gonna be beneficial depending on the use case for you. With this particular tip it is what I like to entitle Ye old Faithful. So again, it is literally just being able to take four fingers and swiping across the screen to get to your recently opened app. So again, this is more so one of those if you are uh, have multiple apps open at the same time and you kinda want to get back and forth to each one again you take four fingers and just swipe over and you'll go to the most recently opened app and then you can keep going to find the app that you're using so again like it's relatively simple and, and again you may know this but if you don't definitely try it out so those are a few tips and tricks that i believe that will be beneficial for you to not only help you increase your productivity in your day-to-day -day workflow but again help you be more comfortable with your ipad now there are a lot of tips that I left off, so be sure to like, share, and comment if you would like a part two. So until next time, much love, peace.